no name is better known than Purvis Young, who's been painting scenes of inner city life down in Overtown since the 60s. But now, thanks to one Larry Clemens, a Purvis Young Museum has sprung up here. And today, at least, the man himself is on hand. I paint problems of the world. You know, I look at the crimes, I look at the, what's going on, you know, in the world. When I see a world is safe, then I paint safe. What I try to do sometimes is paint angels all change up. Oh, you know, an angel don't got home, and all that. I've always loved his work, but he was just always very hard to find. And then coincidentally, a friend of mine told us where we could find Purvis and literally said, Larry, if you'll go down under the expressway, you get off at the 8th Street exit, drive up 3rd Avenue, and there's a church. And if you pass the church, it's the next expressway overpass, he sits right there. And if he's not there, make a right at the first street, and he's in that little shed building across from the next church. Purvis, was there a, was there a point when you, when you knew you could start painting? I mean, what was that moment in time? Well, I picked up a brush, and I picked up a brush and just taught myself. But it really come to me when I sold my first painting. I was professional. I, mean, I can look at my artwork and tell I paint different from other people, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna do no flowers or get too deep into landscaping and all that, you know, I don't, I, I don't wanna do that. Uh, sometimes I mix colors up, I mix the colors. I mix the colors, put yellow and all that in the colors and sometimes people go crazy when I do that. When I met Purvis, he didn't have a doctor. And so the first thing I did is just say, hey, Purvis, you know, because a lot of people have taken advantage of Purvis. You know, people are out there spreading rumors that armed robberies while you went to jail. You see it in all these biographies. And so I said, you know, we've got to right these wrongs. People are talking like you're a drug addict or an alcoholic or that you're a dangerous person. And it's really all the dealers that were just literally trying to keep people and collectors from going to find and seek Purvis. I didn't live a simple life, you know, but I prayed to become great. You know, I don't go to church or nothing like that. I'm just like the American Indian. Sometimes I, when I paint on wood, I like wood. When I paint on wood, I say, well, I'm not the one cutting the forest down. It's something I found. And then I cut and look at the world problems. I've been helping the family for a long time, and I've been collecting his art to maintain the body of the collection. Because, you know, some people will look at a piece of art and many times say, well, I would like to buy that. And I'd say, well, I'm sorry, but I can't sell that because I'm trying to keep the body and the story of the collection together to one day build a museum so people can truly understand the story of Purvis Young. So do you put your energy when you're working into the work totally and, and just ignore everything around you? Is it, is it like sometime that? Sometimes I do. I, sometimes I put it up and sometimes I wait another 10 minutes look at National Geographic or something, and I go back and add more on to it, I be thinking, uh, I wanna paint something different from any artist. Purvis, it turns out, has actually seen this show and didn't hold it against us. Perhaps by the time you see this, Larry's dream of honoring him in his own hometown will come true. But for now, the museum's here, and here is close to the beach. 